magnify the king of kings right now thank you holy spirit of god thank you our father and our god once again we just acknowledge you right now thank you father lord thank you lord jesus thank you father we just magnify you you are our king you are our savior you are our god we release the airwaves now and the and the and the, and the video signals right now we use the blood of jesus to overcome blockages on them right now in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you lord jesus thank you holy spirit of god thank you lord jesus 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 oh daddy we just thank you thank you lord jesus Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you. Thank you, Father, Lord. We acknowledge you as our God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We acknowledge you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Be magnified. Mag be magnified this morning, Lord Jesus. Thank you, 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 Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, King of Kings. So magnify him now, brethren. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Daddy, we want to thank you this morning. We worship you. We acknowledge you are the worthy lamb, the one that was that was sacrificed for us, O oh Lord, because of the love your father had for us. We want to thank you this morning. And we want to bless that wonderful name. And Lord, we just want you to acknowledge that we love you again this morning lord jesus we want to register it that we love you again our father and our god and that no matter what lord jesus our prayer is that nothing can separate us from your love in the name of jesus holy spirit of god daddy we come before you knowing that only you have the power to release us from the place of spiritual warfare only you have the power to cause us to victor in the place of spiritual warfare want to thank you for being on the on the line this morning oh lord want to thank you for those who are on the line and those who might want to be on the line we ask that the blood of jesus release them oh lord from whatever is holding them back right now those that need to be woken up lord you go wake them up wherever they are right now father have mercy on your children as we go into your word this morning lord we ask that you come into our presence also and that you war our battles oh lord and that you victor for, for us in our battles this morning in jesus name we have prayed amen amen good morning brothers and sisters worthy is the lamb that is what we heard just now as we were as we were worshiping in our time of worship i want to thank god for you i hope you all had a good uh, sunday wherever you are to be able to worship the lord i always remember with <clears throat> you know with some um, degree of humility that there are places where people just want to say the name Jesus and they're afraid to say it because they, they're he they could be beheaded just for mentioning that name Jesus just for acknowledging him 
if only the evil ones could even see the thoughts that they had for Jesus that is enough for them to be in trouble but you know some of us we are blessed to be in places where we are not afraid to worship our God even though the enemy is doing everything to shut up the children of God my prayer is that you will never be shut up as you try to serve your God properly in the name of Jesus nothing the enemy does will be able to hold you bound in the name of Jesus this morning it's a bit of preaching but I know the Word of God always brings even deliverances itself and I want to thank God for the Word of God this morning exploring Paul's formula for success exploring Paul's formula for success Paul was a Christian after he after he had that uh, life transforming encounter with Jesus that every child of God needs to be able to succeed as a Christian to be able to, to have general rebounding galloping success in the world both as a spiritual uh, I mean both in the spiritual area and in the physical or material area Paul was a Christian like that. <clears throat> when Paul died, a successful Christian. So successful that a lot of his works are what we read in the Bible today. I want to take you to Acts 28 from 17 to 30. Open your Bibles for Acts 28. I'm going to read from 17 to 30. And it came to pass, after three days, that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. This is this happened after Paul had gone to Malta and all the things that had happened to him in Malta, the shipwrecks and all that on his way to, to Rome. So I'm reading from just after that point. I came to, 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 to Rome. And it came to pass after three days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. So when he had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, though I have done nothing against our people, or the customs of our fathers yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans who when they had examined me wanted to let me go because there was no cause for putting me to death he was an innocent man the only problem was that he was naming Jesus I told you there are places where they named Jesus and you could even be beheaded today they had looked at me and so that there was no reason to put me to death. That's what Paul was saying. Verse 19. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar. Not that I had anything of which to accuse my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see you and speak with you. Because for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. Paul was about the greatest evangelist after Jesus. He says because of Israel, so that the so that the word of God will be transmitted to the ends of the earth. He said, for this I needed to be chained. Many of us are chained for the hope of Israel today. We don't even know it. Many of us are not allowed to excel mightily in the in the secular things of the world because it will take us away from our use for the Lord. I know I'm one of them bound. <laughs> just like Paul then, said to, then they said to him verse 21 we neither received letters from Judea concerning you nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken any evil of you but we desire to hear from you what you think for concerning this sect this is a Christian sect right now that's what they call it we know that it is spoken against everywhere these are brethren who are I just trying to understand about the fact that there's something called a Christian sect. Well, we want to hear from you your views on it. Because everybody speaks evil of this Christianity you're talking about. So when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging. This is what I want you to note. Here is a guy who is a prisoner. He's a prisoner of Rome. They sent him with with a centurion to hold him bound <laughs> hallelujah and if they say they send somebody with a centurion that means there are at least a hundred soldiers guarding him but he had his own lodging 
So let's continue this. So when they had appointed him a day, that is, they had given a day to come and meet Paul, they came to him at his own lodging, to whom he explained and suddenly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. So Paul took a whole day trying to teach them from the law of Moses and the laws of the prophets, you know, the various prophets in the Old Testament, the things that they had said and they had done, the way the Lord had used them. And some were persuaded, that is, some gave their lives to Jesus by the things which were spoken. And then, of course, some will always disbelieve. There will always be some that fall by the great, by the fertile land, and there are those who fall on, on the sand, on the sandy or on the, on the hard rock. Some disbelieved. So when they did not agree amongst themselves, of course, some agreed, some disagreed. So there was no agreement. They departed after Saul had said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet. Remember, he was teaching them about the prophets, using the word prophet. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our father saying, Go to these people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. And their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears we're talking of spiritual understanding now lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that i should heal them here are people who have both physical and spiritual sickness the lord is saying reminding paul to tell them that there's no way they can hear there's no way they can see or or or, or there's no way their hearts can understand. Look at verse 20. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Jews were the first people that the Lord had decided he wanted to save because they are his people. They are the chosen people. They are the ones for which he had a covenant with their great, great ancestor, Abraham. But when they could not hear, then Paul was forced to say this. And then after that, they departed. Then he began to go and fight somewhere. Verse 30 says, Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Let me tell you what I'm trying to bring out in this in this set of verses. How does somebody they call a prisoner, who was taken as a prisoner and shipped to Rome, now get to the city where for two whole years he was in his own rented house, and he was able to receive anybody that came to him. When you're a prisoner, if you have a visitor, you have to be between a glass or or, or iron bars speaking through the media phone or speaking through the bars to the person who comes to visit you but here was this man he stayed in his own rented house and he was able to receive anybody that came to him and not only that he was able to freely preach the kingdom of god and teaching the things which concern the lord jesus bible says with all confidence he wasn't saying while well, looking back at his shoulder wondering who will come and kill him or cut off his head you know somehow harm him he was doing with all confidence no one could forbid him no one forbid him that's verse 31 of uh, of that place we're reading in acts 20 28 so here we see a full play prisoner escorted in a ship for trial in rome and he managed to get his message across paul even though a prisoner of rome lived two whole years in his own rented house and he became a host to those who wanted to know things about God. Paul had a simple formula for his success. And brethren, as we wore all kinds of prayers against the enemy, I want to teach you this, this formula. I've been teaching a few, I mean, when I say a few, I've been teaching the brethren in the Sunday service. I've been teaching them for the last couple of weeks about the things that bring one biblical success. 
there are some things that bring you success biblically if you can learn them they're very simple as simple as they are they are the hardest things on the face of this earth why because we're stiff-necked people you just saw what we read there that even though they were jews they could not under possibly understand what paul was saying only a few of them accepted it even though they were jews even though they were those who had been chosen by god god gives everybody willpower many of us are fighting battles that are against ourselves the enemy is ourselves and i will keep on saying it as long as we have a prayer line or anywhere i preach in the world 95 percent of people on the face of this earth guess who their greatest enemy is is themselves because many of them will not address the major issues that affect their lives and because they don't address these issues it is difficult to move forward we're in a new year that's why i'm preaching the kind of in the kind of manner I'm preaching. We're in a new year where certain things need to be understood and corrected. And that's why I'm talking about Paul now. Paul achieved success in the end as a Christian. He had a simple formula for success. And I'm going to say it again because I've been, like I said, I've been teaching people a few. But even though, even though you are, are in the Sunday school, or the Sunday uh, service. Listen to this. this is a different preaching. One of the things that guarantee outstanding success is the law of love. It is the anchor in the school of galloping outstanding success. The law of love. And to be married to Christ means to be married to his person. Like Paul. Like Paul. The apostle Paul was so motivated by his love of God and others that he was willing to do just about anything brethren and endure just about any form of hardship to help others know Jesus he had been warned that he was going to suffer things when he gets to Rome <laughs> but he was ready to go he was beheaded in the end Paul was ready to go because he was ready to do anything to ensure that People heard about Jesus. And I suspect that's why the Lord honored him by making his words and his journeys eternal in the word of God. That you will always hear about it because he made such an effort to help others know about Jesus. God said, okay, because of that, I'm going to honor this fellow. And anytime anybody opens my word to the ends of the earth, his name will be mentioned there and the way he honored me will be mentioned there. The Apostle Paul's newfound love after he transited you know after they became he left being a prosecutor to a savior of the children of god he moved him to write what some people call a love chapter first corinthians 13 i'm going to read it to you quickly in case you don't know <laughs> this is known as paul's love uh, love letter to the corinthians if i speak in the terms of men or of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can even move mountains, but do not have love, Paul says, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Hmm. Then he goes on. He says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. Brethren, Paul called these the qualities of love. I'll even go to verse 8. He called it the qualities of love. But these are the qualities that a good Christian should also have. These are the qualities that a Christian that is serving God to the best of his or her ability should have. These are the kind of qualities that somebody who wants to overcome spiritually 
against the enemy, these are the things that that person should have. Let me move to verse 8 of uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 13. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, guess what happens with prophecies? Prophecies will cease. Where there are tongues, that is, you know how to speak in tongues, uh, like some of you do. There's some people that before they say two sentences, they've spoken in tongues. When they are praying, before they say they've started speaking in tongues. But the Bible says here, according to Paul, where there are tongues, even they will be stilled. It says, even when you are so you have so much wisdom, you have so much knowledge, it says that it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. It says, but when completeness comes, that is prophesying and knowledge, there are things that we also, we, we cannot know everything because God knows all prophecies. He's the one that is the beginning and the end. He's also the one who knows all knowledge. So whatever we have is always part knowledge. It can never be complete knowledge. But whatever we prophesy is always, is, is, is not of knowing everything. It's just of knowing a little bit. That's what Paul is saying there. But in verse 10 it says, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. Hallelujah. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought, that is his thinking, like a child. And my reasoning, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. What Paul is saying is, there's a time when I was a spiritual baby, but now I am a giant in the spirit things. And because I've become a giant, I've become a, a, an adult in the spiritual things, I have put away those things that are uh, of a baby Christian. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I'm fully known. There will be a time when every Christian shall know all things. That is when you come to the presence of the Lord. You come to the presence of the Lord. He says, but for now, three things remain. There are three things you can hold on to that might be in completeness if you practice them. He says there is faith. That is verse 13 if you are following me. And now these three things, these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. He says, but the greatest of all these brethren is what? Is love. The greatest is love. I taught those in the Sunday service that the greatest law, if you want to have success, the greatest biblical law is to love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and everything that follows it. That is the greatest law. The Bible says all other laws come under this. Now, Paul, like I said, one of the greatest brides of Christ, he understood this formula for success. If you look in Romans uh, 8, 35 to, 30, to 38, he says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? That is, would you allow yourself to be separated from the love of Christ? Being that is the most important thing, will you allow tribulation, shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? Will you allow tribulation? Will you allow distress? Will you allow persecution? Will you allow famine? Will you allow nakedness? That is something shaming you. Will you allow peril or the sword? Will you allow these things to separate you from the greatest thing? The thing that will give you the greatest success? The thing that guarantees your success as a human being? Will you allow it? What is that thing? The thing is the love of Christ. He says, as it is written, verse 36, Romans 8, 35 to 38, verse 36. And it is as it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. For whose sake? For thy sake. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Paul is saying that I am willing to do anything day and night. I'm ready to be killed just to be able to preach Jesus to you. He says in 38, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor the things to come none of these things can separate him from that love none of those things you see brethren if you want to have success in this year we're in and even moving forward in your life your love for christ has to be an absolute love it has to be an absolute love. When your love becomes absolute for Christ, heavens are open to you. 
If there's a brass heaven over you for any reason, maybe somebody has cursed you. Maybe somebody has gone somewhere to make incantations against you. Maybe there are witches walking against you. Whatever it is, if your love for Christ is absolute, heavens must open to you. You too will be lifted up like this poor guy. Giving yourself totally and absolutely to the person of Christ is what we call love. John 15, he says, he says, I am the true vine and ye are the branches. We are spliced into him. We must be tied to him no matter what. Oh, you want to have success? You want to be able to overcome witches and wizards? Is the love, is your, is the, is your ability to, to transmit that love and show Christ that love. Your ability to tie yourself into him. That is, this, that is your strength in overcoming all these powers of darkness we pray against every day, brethren. When your relationship with God is based on conditions, then your situation will still remain complicated, brethren. Meaning that not even death can separate you from Him. When you, when, when you have Christ, when you allow Him to be everything to you, when your thoughts and considerations are, 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 are based on what will happen, what will Christ say? If I go to this situation, what will he do? How will he react? Will he be grieved? Will he be weeping because of me somewhere? When you see Christ from that view, brethren, it is impossible for you not to war a war against the kingdom of darkness and, and lose. You cannot lose. You cannot lose when you are one with him. Men with a heart for God, men who care about God, men whose thoughts are always for God, you cannot wish them away in the world. They will be remembered. So will women, of course. When I say men, I'm talking of human beings now. You cannot remove them or forget them. It is impossible. Those three Hebrew boys, I will remind you again, I've been preaching it for the last couple of weeks. If you remember those three Hebrew boys, Mesach, Abned, Shedrach, and Abednego, and even their friend Daniel, every time somebody told them something against the kingdom of God, they were ready to die. He told Daniel, if you pray, you're going to die. Dude prayed, went and prayed, knowing that, and he prayed at the window. So he wanted them to see him, so that they were, and they arrested him, put him in a den of lions. Lions didn't do jack. Couldn't do anything till morning. The three boys too, they say they stoked the furnace. Some of that the people were pushing them into the furnace. They were they were completely burnt, incinerated. They were able to subdue the kingdom of wickedness by their heart for God. That's the same principle, brethren. We need to start practicing the principles that will give us success. We can be praying all the aggressive prayers in the world and then if we go back and live lives that are completely at variance to the love of God those prayers will never be answered that's why some who can they can go to the prayer line you can go to those videos we have on deliveranceseries.com pray till next year nothing will happen you know why you are not operating in love if you operate in love, even against those who you know are your enemies, they will ultimately die. Oh, they will ultimately die. You are empowered to subdue kingdoms when you have a genuine heart for Christ, brethren. That is when your empowerment comes. That's when the anointing flows on you. Second Corinthians 8.5, it says, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. When you first give yourself to the Lord and then you give yourself to other people by the will of God, because God's will is also is to love your neighbor as yourself. When you do that, there is no prayer you pray that will not be answered. There's so many times, I'm not telling you, I, I'm very far from being a perfect Christian. My, my Lord and my Savior knows that I have a long walk to even come anywhere near perfection. But you know, I try to practice what I'm saying every day and that is why... Sometimes some of you will phone me in, in um, a lot of 
distress maybe or maybe one of your family members has distress or a friend has distress and you phone and we'll pray and god will hear the prayers almost immediately i'm not better than anybody else no but god knows your heart if your heart is trying to practice loving him if you first give yourself to god before anything as you run after god good things will begin to run after you too oh brother i said we cannot afford to be living our christian lives the way we'll be living it there must be a change this year you should not go through 2013 again then that by this time next year again 2014 will be saying you i'm okay we'll be preaching the same preachings no we should be preaching higher level preachings hallelujah john 15 16 you know i was talking about the true vine he says you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should do what should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the father in my name he may give to you when you are spliced when you splice yourself with the lord when you make yourself one with him if you can do that brethren god will be speaking to you nothing fantastic i tell people say oh pastor how do you always know these things i just try to align myself with god even when i'm far from him in any way i still try to align myself because in doing that brother like i said the lord will know that these are the ones i want to have something to do with and there's no way that something good will not come out of that your experience with him at every point in at every turn the good earth expects us to be married to him and his cause at all times he came that no one should perish but to come to repentance to God. So when we are married to his cause, what moves him is what moves us. And what moves us is what moves him. Whatever situation we are in, the Lord will be quick to say, mm -mm -mm, that's not going to happen to my children. Second Peter 3 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance the lord expects us that none of us should perish he wants us to be doing his course paul was there in acts 28 pining for the souls of the romans he wanted to get to them somehow the jews in rome he wanted to get to them and then when they were misbehaving he said look even the gentiles are receiving jesus and you are misbehaving till today that's still happening Many Jews don't want to hear about Jesus. And those are called Gentiles. They are, they are there. If you are not winning souls for Christ, if you are not someone who is doing things to change his kingdom, if you are the one who will hear sermons like this, when it's time to give offerings to move the kingdom, to move the work forward, or to give prayers and fastings, or to give material, if you are not that kind of person, you are not in love with him. Let me be honest with you. You are not. If you are married to his cause, ministers like me should never ask you to give an offering online for instance it should not be an issue even if you don't have ten thousand ten dollars twenty dollars thirty dollars all of everybody putting it together adds up to move the kingdom of god forward if you're not doing that you are not you are not loving him the way you should bring someone to christ oh i cannot do that it's not my turn we have uh evangelists in the church <laughs> if you are that kind of person you are not the proper Christian loving him yet you have not got there to love God to love Jesus to have uh, inexplicable success you must have a lifestyle of love towards him and that lifestyle must show in everything you do every day of your life if you are ashamed to show the love of Christ to people or to your surroundings or in your office how can he be proud of you how can he link up with you we see in Acts 28 what level Paul was ready to go to so that the word of God could be preached to those who had never heard of it. Remember Matthew 6.33 Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Bible says and all those funny things you keep looking for every day will be added on to you. Your job is just waiting for you to preach Christ to someone. Your husband is just waiting for you to lead someone to Christ. Your finances is just waiting for you to begin to move towards the things of God. If you love the Lord, 
You will be married to his house. You will be married to his things. Psalm 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Psalm 87 verse 1 says, How amiable are your tabernacles, O Lord, my soul longed for thee. That's where you can hear David, the psalmist there. He was eager to go into the house of the Lord. He was eager to do the things that bless God. And that's why the Lord, despite all the failings of David with women and being a killer, somebody went about killing, shedding blood, despite all his failings, the Lord always called him a man after my heart. Because his, his love of God was never, he never compromised. And that's what you are supposed to be doing, brethren. David always defeated all his enemies. David did not die on the battlefield. David died on his bed, comfortably, slept off. <laughs> because he was in love with God at all times. He was always in love with God. How about Saul that did not really love God? He died in the place of the battle, he and his family. You need to tell the Lord, I long to be in your house. You can't be married to Jesus and not be married to his house. I told them on Sunday morning, I'm telling you to now. You cannot be married, you cannot say I'm married to Jesus. You are not married to the things that concern him. They want to raise offerings in your church. They want to raise offerings for missionaries. You always turn your face away. You are the one always calculating how much money you, you will never have that money. I'm not cursing you. I'm just telling you the biblical laws of success. I'm teaching you the things that will bring you success. I'm telling you what Paul did for success. If you are not like David who praises God seven times a day. I've told you this year is for praising God. If you, David used to praise God seven times a day, we make fun of the Muslims. The Muslims turn to Jesus to, to, to their to their Islamic uh, God. If <laughs> at least I think five or six times a day. I don't know how many. I can't remember. I think it's five times or something. They will turn to where they believe he is, and they will five times a day they will turn to him. And they will pray to him. If you Christians could do that for only three times a day, many of you will be excelling. I'm not speaking now as the word of God. He practically lived in the house of the Lord, David, when he was not out fighting for Israel. When you are the wife of the king, your royalty is established. Every form of slavery is removed forever. When you are the wife of the president, you live and enjoy everything that the president enjoys. But brethren, only God can make you great. Only God. I can make you great. Your pastor can make you great. If I lay hands on you and the anointing of God comes, it is where you have a relationship. If I lay hands on you, the anointing will bring to pass what I have been asked to anoint you for. But it will not stay for long before it departs. That breakthrough unless you have a personal relationship zephaniah 3 18 to 20. i will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden behold at that time i will undo all that afflict thee and i will save her that halteth and that her that was driven out and i will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame at that time i'll bring you again even the time that i gather you for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. That's the word of God for those who love him. Who love him. First Chronicles 29, 12 says, Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Riches and honor they are for those who love God. It is his hand that makes great. Greatness cannot be achieved. It can only be imparted as you walk with God. As you marry yourself to God like Paul did. Bible says in Acts 19, 11 to 12, I'm rounding up now. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So much that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Paul couldn't be married to Jesus and be sick. 
he became a conduit for Jesus healing power we too should easily walk in the realm of good health and transfer that anointing to somebody else who needs it we and him we are now one flesh when we say we love him whatever is found in him should also be found in us if riches are found in the lord then we too should, riches should be found with us if happiness is and the joy is found in our god and our savior it should be with us also whatever it is if liberation a life of liberty is found in the lord then we too should be there ephesians 6 10 to 12 Paul finally that even with god's love we still have to worry about the brethren and that we are hopelessly outnumbered but that our love for god gives us the supernatural support the confidence and the backing that we need to succeed that's what he says finally be strong in the lord and his and the strength of his might you must have love love is the law loving your god loving his things i will keep on saying this online because there's no there's no shortcut there's no other shortcut brethren i told them yesterday morning i said look you can live to be 70 and 80 and have all the knowledge at 70 and 80 of course you've been through every cycle of life so that time they say oh he's a wise old man but they are wise young men they are mark zuckerbergs who are billionaires before 30. where does their wisdom come from zuckerberg is a jew so he's connected by covenant you have to be connected by your love your covenant is established in your love then he'll give you those wonderful ideas those wonderful things that will bring your breakthrough and your emancipation bow down your heads where you are right now bow down your heads i want you to pray right now and tell the lord lord anoint me anoint me with the power to love you that's the theme for today lord just anoint me with the power to love you just tell the lord where he is anoint me with the power to love you my father my god you just go ahead and, and pray that prayer right now father anoint me anoint me with the power to love you i want to love you and i know that loving you guarantees me success so lord anoint me with that power i want to be empowered to love you i want to be empowered that there will be no gap between you and i please pray that prayer for yourself where you are right now father empower me to love you empower me to love you empower me to love you when you are empowered to love him brethren i said one with christ one with christ is what is a majority all the prayers we are praying against the devil they will just be walking anyhow before you pray God has already gone ahead of you. He has already gone ahead of you. Go ahead and pray that prayer right now. Go ahead and pray that prayer now. Hallowed be his name. You go ahead and just pray that prayer right now. Father, we just thank you, Lord Jesus. <coughs> we just bless your holy name right now. We just lift you up. Jehovah Rapha. The banner, Jehovah Nisi. The mighty man in battle. We desire to love you, Lord Jesus. And we ask that you anoint us with the power to love you, Lord. Unconditionally. Despite whatever we're going through, anoint us with the power to love you, Father. That is our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We'll have a prophetic session tomorrow. I'll entreat the, God, the Lord. Spend some time with Him. <laughs> I want God to speak to us speak to us invite your friends tomorrow we have a prophetic session tomorrow we have a prophetic session tomorrow if you have any testimonies it is important oh brethren this it is a part of praise i told you that yesterday on worship to give testimonies to give testimonies part of it is declaring what the lord has done if you have a testimony right now i want you to be bold just be bold to say what it is that the lord has done for you right now just be bold to say that this is what god has done for me if you have a testimony please just go forward right now does anybody want to share a testimony with us does anybody want to share a testimony with us of the goodness of god 
Does anybody want to share a testimony of God's goodness and his kindness, brethren? Do you want to say anything to the goodness of God? Glory be to God.